So one of the themes of Marx, as, as I perceived it, is that content is king, right? And let's take content to the extreme. You want content to affect every operation you do. So when you're manipulating images, you're doing geometric transformations, you want the content to apply to the, to the transformation that you're doing. So when you're scaling an image, when you're cropping an image, the content should affect the result because when you're manipulating two different images, the retargeting of these two images should be different. And what I want to show you is a simple way of doing that, and it's a very simple interactive way of uh, handling this problem. So here is an image, and what I want to do is scale it. And if I scale it, this is the result that I'll get. Okay? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Let's remember this result for a minute. And now let's take the original image and say that we want to sim card it. And what it's doing now, it's calculating whatever needs to be done. And now... Oh, wow. And just for comparison, same carving and scaling, right? <laughs> and of course, you don't only have to reduce the size of the image, you can also extend it. So if I'm going to grab it and scale it further, this is the comparison. <laughs> How does it work? Well, there are only 20 lines of code that do the actual work. The rest of it is just UI and, and stuff like that. What you do is you find the scene, you see this red line, which is the kind of a path of least amount of energy in the image. And once you found it, you remove it. And you repeat the process again and again and again and again. And the point is that you can do it once when you load the image or once when you're offering the image and then it's stuck with the image. You can save, save it as a very compact file, uh, metadata that will follow the file wherever it goes. So when you present it on the web, when you present it on the cellular phone, when you present it on the printer, when you want to print it, it will follow the decisions made by the author at the first time and you get this result. You can also uh, increase the size of the image. So if, for instance, I want to increase the height, instead of removing, I'm inserting. Basically, I'm duplicating the number of pixels that I found along the scene. OK? Now, what I want to do is simply walk over a list of uh, several examples to show you the type of results that you can get. The first one is take some time to load, so I'll talk over it. The process is done um, uh, completely automatic, and the point is that if you don't like the result, you'll be able to edit it. So first what I'm going to show you is how it looks like when you're doing it completely automatic. So here is an image of the island that I'm going to take a vacation <laughs> after Max, hopefully. <laughs> and now I'm going to retarget it. And one thing I've noticed is that people seem to expect this type of images. So just as a, a comparison, I'll show you what happens when you're scaling the image. So you have scaling here, retargeting here. So notice all the rocks, the bridge, the tree here that is almost invisible here. And it's all done automatically. One of the things is that automatic things don't usually work perfectly in all cases. What happens when it fails? So here is a typical touristic example. And when I do scene carving on it, you see that to some degree it works well. You can see here that the tree and the, uh, this building change their distance, but it kind of collapses. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's not so nice. <laughs> so how do you correct that? So the point is to have the user in the loop, right? Adobe builds these wonderful tools that allow users to be in the loop. So what I'm going to do is basically add these two constraints. 
that's it. And now I'm going to scene carve it again. And what I basically said was I want the scene carving operator to respect this boundary that I just marked. So you see that now when I'm doing the operation, this is the type of result. But once you put the user in the loop, you can do all sorts of things. So for instance, and what I want to draw your attention to is this is a painting, this is not a photograph. Still, the algorithm can work on it as well. Once you have the user in the loop, you can do all sorts of things. So for instance, I really don't like this boat. <laughs> so I'm going to erase it. Whoa! So what I did now is I used the same 20 lines of code, and first what I did is I seam carved, seam carved the, the, the boat away, and then I expanded the image back to, the, to its original size. So nothing uh, uh, special about that. Really. <laughs> and just before I, I finish, let me show you my favorite example. So here is a picture of shoes. And what I'm going to do now is mark this shoe here. And it er erase. So every everything is done live on the machine here. And this is the result that you'll get <laughs> and compare it to the original image. <laughs> if someone can show the color of the missing shoe in this example. <laughs> yeah. So it's the pink shoe here that was removed from oh. this image. So basically, the whole point is to take a very simple uh, piece of code and try and propagate it throughout the entire uh, um, set of operations you can do with images and apply it in different ways. So you can think of applying it to uh, mobile devices, to web application when you're printing something, when you're, of course, you want to apply it to video, you want to change the aspect ratio, and so on and so forth. And it all boils down to a very simple uh, function that can manipulate images this way. Thank you.